Hello, welcome. Yeah. So, um, first as always, thank you, Lord Christ, you're incredible. And um, second, here I have perhaps our final video on this topic, Taylor Errorbound, because this will be our fourth video, and uh, between the four videos, you should have all of your needs met. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, where have I heard that before? <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. So, 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 um, yeah, as a bonus video, I might like do a proof of why the error bound works the way that it does, but let's get on with this. Now, in the last video, what we're doing is kind of the opposite of what we're doing here. In the last video, we're given so many terms of the cosine series, the cosine Maclaurin series to be specific, where we used it to evaluate cosine of 0 0.3, and then we said, okay, so if we use this many terms, then what's the error? This time, we're given the error that, um, that we need to be limited by and what we have to do is figure out how many terms of the sine Maclaurin series we have to use so that the error is less than this. Now <laughs> one of you might be like oh yeah we could do sine of 0 0.3 in our calculator and then we could write so many terms of the sine Maclaurin series and compare the two but you can't do that because well what your calculator programmers did is do exactly what we're gonna do in this video which is that they like prescribed an error uh, let's say 0 0.0000001 and so they used enough of the Maclaurin series for sine to fit an error like this which will be how many uh, decimals are displayed in your calculator. In other words, your calculator is estimating so you can't be doing like sine of 0 0.3 in your calculator because that, that's not the true value of sine. You'd have to use infinitely many terms of the Maclaurin series in order for you to say that's the true value of sine of 0 0.3, yeah? Okay, I thought we should like get that out of the way. Okay, otherwise, well, we know what the Maclaurin series for sine looks like. So sine x is equal to it's equal to this infinite series, and this is what I mean, which is that like if you want sine of zero point three, actually, like you know, in its full glory, you need to do an infinite sum. But we don't need that. We only need a certain degree of accuracy. So n equals zero to infinity. This is the Maclaurin series for sine, and it's negative one to the power n. Otherwise, it's x to the two n plus one over two n uh, plus one factorial, right? Got it, got it, got it. So if we do sine of 0 0.3 and show so many terms, sine of 0 0.3 is going to be equal to, well, if we plug in n equals zero, we're gonna get just x. So that will be 0 0.3 plugged into x to the first power over one factorial. So we could just write 0 0.3. I'll put it in parentheses so that we see that it's plugged in. And then, and then it's gonna be, well, when n equals one, it's gonna be negative one to the first power. So it's gonna be minus, and you could do this more carefully, but it's gonna be uh, 0 0.3 to the third over three factorial. Now, if we write one more, that's gonna be uh, plus uh, 0 0.3 to the fifth over five factorial. Now, these are the first three non-zero terms, but in actuality, like if we stopped here, right? This is the third degree, um, Taylor centered at zero, therefore third degree Maclaurin, uh, evaluated at 0 0.3, right? For, of course, specifically the function sine of x. Okay, cool. And we know that the r sub n formula, that is r sub n of x is equal to uh, capital M over uh, n plus one factorial, um, and then times x minus a to the power n plus one but as I said in the last video, since we're working with, with Maclaurin series here, a is zero. So we get x minus zero to the n plus one. So just x to the n plus one in this part, yeah? And I intentionally wrote the uh, x minus a to the power n plus one in case your need is to do a Taylor series centered away from zero. That is not a Maclaurin series, a general Taylor, right? Okay, 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 all right. Now what we said is m is an upper bound M is an upper bound um, for for the n plus first derivative um, derivative in the interval a to x and the interval a to x. Now, since we're working with the Maclaurin series again, a is zero, so. 0 to x and our x here is 0 0.3 because we're doing sine of, sine of 0 0.3 sine of x and clearly x is 0 0.3 okay cool got it 
All right, now, if we're going with uh, P sub 3 being good enough for the error that we're talking about here, then the n plus first derivative is gonna be the fourth derivative. Okay, fourth derivative. Got it. Now, since um, f of x is equal to sine x, f, f of x equals sine x, f prime of x is cos x, uh, f double prime of x is negative sine x, um, the third derivative, which we'll just write with 3, and that's why, by the way, in the Taylor series, they go fn of a to mean the nth derivative evaluated at a because, well, it's too many tick marks. Yeah, so f3 uh, of x, the um, third derivative for sine, is going to be negative cosine x, right? Um, sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. And so the fourth derivative, f4 of x, is going to equal, well, it's going to be uh, sine of x. Okay, so the n plus first derivative we see, uh, in this case, since we're talking about the fourth derivative, is going to be sine x. So we need the maximum value of sine x um, in this interval, max of sine x in this interval, right? Where x is prescribed by this interval. Now, notice that if we uh, were using um, some other term, right, that the derivative might be negative. But m here, which is something I didn't mention in the last video, is considered an absolute value. So it's the maximum inside of this interval, an absolute value. So here we're not worried because, well, the fourth derivative is positive. But I'm saying in a different problem, if you're using a derivative that's negative, you want to look at the maximum value it attains in this interval from a to x, an absolute value. So you want to look at the maximum and absolute value, yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So like maybe, you know, that's so important to you perhaps. I'm anticipating that we should like consider like if we're, let's say, uh, working with the fourth derivative being negative sine, which is not the case here, or negative cosine, let's say negative cosine, negative cosine would look like this where this is pi over two, right? And so then on zero to um, 0 0.3, we'd have this value to compare, and at zero, we're at negative one. So the absolute value of the maximum attained between zero and 0 0.3 then, if we're working with the fourth derivative being negative cosine, again, would be absolute value of negative one, which is positive one, yeah? Okay, cool. But we're working with sine, all right? So the maximum value that sine attains in this interval is positive sine of 0 0.3. So that's what m is. m here is, sine of 0 0.3, got it. Okay, because sine is an increasing function in this interval and therefore it will attain its maximum value. Uh, that is, it will, have, it will have an upper bound for the fourth derivative on the right end of the interval since the fourth derivative again is sine x and sine x has, in this interval, its maximum value on the right end, right? Okay, so sine of 0 0.3 is m, got it. And of course, from the get-go, we know that we're doing r sub n of 0 0.3, so x is 0 0.3. So we could do this, and then in this part, we'll have 0 0.3 to the n plus 1. Now, we've already said that n plus 1 in this case is 4. So we're going to put a fourth power here, and this denominator is going to be 4 factorial, which is going to be 24. Now, is this going to be less than 0 0.001? Well, let us see. I've got a calculator. So let us see what the calculator says. And the verdict is, okay, so what's the first thing I want to do? I want to do sine of, um, so that's going to be sine of 0 0.3. Okay, and that's right there, sine of 0 0.3, yeah? Okay, maybe that was close, I don't know. I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> and then uh, we divide this by 24, so divide by 24. And so now this is what we've got, yeah? Okay, and the only thing I have left is to multiply this by 0 0.3 to the fourth power. So I multiply by 0 0.3 to the fourth power, and that's going to be, um, yeah, sorry, that's going to be that, which is 0 0.0001. So we've just realized that this number right here is actually 0. 0, 0, 0, 1. So that's more than sufficient for the error that we wanted to guard against. Yeah? Okay, cool. I'm done.